What's up, everybody? Scott and Pete here for another episode of our weekly video series. Uh, Scott, what's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, dude. I'm excited for today's topic, uh, one that's near and dear to uh, my heart, book clubs, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's just kick it right off, man. And let me start by asking you, are book clubs lame? <laughs> um, so it's funny because I think we were talking about this beforehand and I this being in a book club with you, Meg and Deb are, you know, colleagues and friends literally for now, what coming up on like 16 months, I think, um, maybe even more, might be like close to a year and a half, almost basically the beginning of the pandemic last year. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's how this all started. Right. We started doing our book club. It, we were, you know, COVID happened. We were all kind of stuck in our houses and, um, we decided to try and make the best of it. And I forget what was our first book. Do you remember? So oh. it's funny. Yeah. We started out with shift, right? No, no, no. What we, did we started start out with whole? rich dad, poor dad, man. The, the Holy grail of all the books. Wasn't Holy that our cow. first book? Yeah. I think that yeah. was our first book. I know that we, at some point definitely read shift early on because we were talking about wanting to, you know, truly dive into like coming up with some strategies. Cause remember at that time, real estate looked like uh, we were going belly up at the time. So we're all sitting at home, stuck in quarantine, freaking out about, you know, what's next? You know, how are we going to sell a house if we can't leave the house? Um, and, you know, I think it, so to answer the question, it's like, you know, I never imagined myself joining a book club because I think typically it's always been portrayed as this, you know, oh, I'll gather around and, you know, almost turns into like more like gossip hour rather than we've been super purposeful about picking some really impactful books. And I've got to say, man, like the learning that we've done in our book club over the last year plus has been transformative. Um, so what about you, man? Book clubs, uh, did you have a lame impression going into the ours? Yeah, man, for sure. So like, uh, I always think of that Baker Mayfield commercial where he's like on the bleachers and someone yep. bails on it. It's so funny. But no, for me, man, I mean, not being the most studious student um, growing up and not really reading a lot of books. You know, for me, the idea of book club really did just seem kind of foreign, I guess. I didn't really know how they worked and kind of what to expect. But I got to say, man, since the four of us started our first book club, I mean, to, like you had kind of said, I mean, it, there's just so many good things that come out of it if you have the right people, which I think is important. Um, but just some of the different things that you get out of a book club, right? Like we'll four people read the same book and take out sometimes four different things or something that I missed that you had noticed or, or Meg noticed that I had missed. And just kind of having that accountability, that conversation and the different perspectives has been a huge difference for me in book clubs. Yeah. And I, I think so that you mentioned a couple of things that are big factors into what I think has made our book club, which again, yeah, I, I grew up as the guy that like, I don't think I hardly read any of the assigned reading in school um, unless the book really interested me. Um, although, fun fact, I did win my um, reading book club in like fifth grade because I figured out how to game the system based on the amount of points you would get for the books. Just started reading all of the books that had the most points, but that's neither here than there. No, that, that sounds like you. <laughs> <laughs> the key though is right. Like, I think it's also a combination of two things you mentioned, like the types of books we're reading and the group of people that we're with. And I think it's really helped us be kind of accountable to each other, which is part of the joke of that Baker Mayfield commercial is, you know, they got this group and, you know, nobody can show up on time and you know, they're like, do we need to vote this person out of the book club? I think the reason we've been able to consistently keep our book club going is because every week, even if we do have a bump in the road, like we all gather up, figure out what our date is that we need to change the book club to, and we consistently make sure all of us are there showing up 100% ready to discuss that book. So I think accountability is a big part of, you know, a successful book club. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think it makes it fun too. Um, you know, we've had, again, having those different perspectives just really kind of twist your mind around. And I remember when we finished last year, I think we had read like 13 books or something like that, 14 books. I think by the time the whole pandemic, not the pandemic was over, but the year was over. And it's so funny because you end up 
taking things away that you don't even realize you take away sometimes, right? And, and then when you read as much as, as we have been reading, you find yourself like saying these profound things that make you sound really smart that you really just picked up from a book somewhere. And then when you try and remember where it came from, you just almost don't even remember. Right, what a concept. I think I find ourselves in conversation now constantly, you know, if we're all together, I'm like, wait, you know, Pete, Meg, was this from this book? Like, I feel like I have a, like, a little tangent of something that I want to go off on, but I, I can't remember where it came from. And it's, you know, all those things that just stick in the back of your brain that are huge, impactful life, you know, lessons, I think, uh, that we've taken away. So I'm curious, like, what have been, we've mentioned Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I think is definitely always going to remain top of the list or near it. Uh, what were some of your favorite books? Because we have, like, cranked through a tremendous amount of books together. We really have. And I mean, just kind of for perspective, right? We're realtors, we're in business, we're entrepreneurs. So we do read a lot of business books, uh, personal development books, things like that. Um, you know, and I think probably just off the top of my head, I mean, definitely Rich Dad, Poor Dad, we mentioned that one. Um, one that I read actually outside of this was um, Atomic Habits. And then we actually read it again in the, the book club. So Atomic Habits was a huge one for me. And I think that's more of the one that sticks with me that I don't even realize it sticks with me. Um, the Miracle Morning for me was game changing. Um, I know we haven't done that in book club yet, but that one is an audible thing that I listen to. Um, but I think even just as recently as Give and Take was a big mindset shift for me. Giftology was huge. I mean, we've read a lot of a lot of books. It's hard to really think about it because there's so many different things. But I, and just to kind of go back on what you were talking about with Shift, just for some perspective, Shift is a real estate book that talks about you know markets shift all the time. So really, best practices to have in any market that'll help you excel, which is why we were reading that one during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, well, the, I should say the early parts of the pandemic. So what about you? What were some of your top ones? Yeah. So I mean, I think for me, Rich Dad Poor Dad definitely high on the list. Um, I loved how to win friends and influence people. Um, I know that came as a you know high recommendation from Al Donahue himself, and uh, I know he's a, a big fan of books. So it was one of those books that I also joke right that I used to be a big book collector, but not necessarily a book reader. I had so many of the books that we've read sitting on my bookshelf, just going unread. And I think that accountability of knowing I got to show up and discuss them with you guys week to week is a big reason for why I continue to push and actually read these books now. But How to Win Friends and Influence People was big. Um, I also, I loved Energy Bus. Um, True, I think good it's point. a yeah. one where, for anybody listening to this, you don't have to be looking for a business-oriented book or anything. That is just a really cool concept on surrounding yourself with good people that, and also putting positive energy out into the universe. Um, because it'll always come back tenfold and the opposite is true. So I read that book while I was in Costa Rica and I remember coming back just being like, my life has changed. Like I am just putting out all positive vibes and I'm surrounding myself with like-minded people that are also doing the same. Anybody that wants to be that energy vampire, something they discuss in the book. You beat me to it. I was going to say, you started identifying <laughs> energy vampires. Who's got to get out of my life? Who, I need, who do I need closer in my life? Yeah. Um, no, energy, energy bus was huge. That was a great one. And now another one that is, uh, I think, something that's poignant right now to discuss because we're about to kick off a book club around this book is Profit First, which is another phenomenal book, whether you're business or just looking to get better with your personal finances. And I can see you're chomping at the bit to jump in on this. So. Um, so, yeah, something that I think is important is how these books sometimes work together. Right. So I mentioned give and take uh, a few minutes ago, yeah. and that's kind of right how we got into this. So we're, we're having this great culture between the four of us. We're all growing individually and together. And we read here comes this book called Give and Take. Right. And, and it's about um, giving unconditionally, essentially. I mean, there are things that you should protect yourself from, but essentially always leading with giving and value first. And I think that resonated with all of us where we said, well, listen, we're doing this awesome thing here. How can we give this out to other people? How can we help bring people into our world? And that's where this concept between Profit First came about. Yep. And I'm excited because now we've got from going from our core four group 
Uh, we're going to have, what, 11 people on our Profit First Book Club starting up uh, this week. Yeah, so we've got to let, so, you know, we were very guarded, right, about, we didn't, we had something good going, we didn't want to mess it up. And then here comes this book, Give and Take, that just kind of really said, look, if it's, if it's good, let it go and help it help other people as you can. So Profit First is one we didn't really talk about, but Profit First, I would have to say, from like a action item, step by step, like I, we read Profit First early in the pandemic last year, and that is the one that I use every single day. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, it's, yeah, it, it's just, it's so cool because again, it applies to us as realtors, 1099, and, you know, uh, independent contractors. It applies to the W2 employee. It is just for even, I always considered myself generally pretty good with my finances. And I think you fall into that same category. And yet it just revolutionized the way that I go about my personal accounting of keeping track of where my money is. And the key concept behind it is profit first. You got to be paying yourself first, even if it's as small as just 1% of that paycheck that you're taking home, setting aside that little amount that you can reward yourself and go spend on the things that you just really want, not necessarily the things you need, but the things that, you know, and it just, the book was life changing, man. So I'm excited to get started. Well, that's it. And, you know, as we're coming up on time here, I just think it's important for any realtors, any entrepreneurs, anybody who's out there. I mean, I think it's funny when I look at people, I always like watch people, right? When I say, oh, yeah, I pay myself a quarterly bonus. Especially other real estate agents are like, wait, what? Like, how does that even make sense? Like quarterly bonus. And like, just since we implemented Profit First, I never had to worry about or I haven't had to worry about where my marketing budget is coming from, where my office expenses are coming from, you know, what, what, how much am I, where am I actually financially, right? That is one of the biggest keys is within a, a minute, you can see exactly where you are with the instant assessment and seeing where everything is. So um, although our book club is closed, we will be doing stuff like this again in the future. So if you're ever interested in joining some sort of book club or, or kind of how to get started on doing something like this, what to look for in the people that would be in your book club, reach out to myself, reach out to Scott. We're happy to help. Yeah, absolutely. And I will put it out there. Pete, I don't know if you want to match this, but if anyone wants to private message me, um, I'm willing to give away up to five copies of Profit First to anyone that messages me. Um, I think it's that impactful. And if you're listening to this and you'd love to you know, change your financial aspect, even if you can't join in on the book club, hit me up. I've got some copies ready for you. You know what? I'll match you on that, but I'm going to actually match you with give and take. I'll give away five copies of give and take. All right. I love it, man. Putting that energy out there. You know, and everybody should just get energy bus. <laughs> <laughs> just get it. <laughs> All, All right. right, guys. So that does it for us this week. We hope you guys enjoyed, uh, you know, the topic we're talking about. As always, if there's anything Scott and I can do to help you, personal business, real estate, anything you need, you just give us a call. All right. Till next time, guys. Oh my God. I'll edit this. I think it's very good. <laughs> Trying to find that uh, end record button. Yeah. Where the hell is that? Uh, do you have to press the three little dots again? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't help that I can't see. This is a great take out, outtake, by the way. Yeah, right. I was going to say. <laughs> this is I always just panic and end the call. Okay. Blooper reel. <laughs> I know. I thought, what was that? Was that when we were at the shore? Oh, wait, we're still recording. <laughs>